Marcel, family dad with Simple Suburban Living. And uh, what I wanted to show you today was the solar heater that I built for the pool. Uh, very similar to a lot of other ideas that are out there on YouTube. I just kind of uh, put mine into a 4x8 casing here made out of 2x4s and plywood. Um, I'll also show you my diverter, that I'm how I'm diverting water from the, the pool pump uh, directly through the pool heater. And it will give you some uh, um, quick statistics on kind of how it runs and how it heats the pool and, and how I feel uh, they should be used. Um, now you'll notice a big difference in the way that this looks right now from the way that the thumbnail picture looked and the pictures that I showed at the beginning of the video. Um, those pictures were taken right after this was built, when it was all nice and circular and everything. Um, I wanted to show this as, as kind of a reality of how what happened over the last year of this um, this pool heater, this pool heater, and uh, just kind of give you some advice and, and how I'm going to go about fixing this. I haven't had a chance to do it yet this year, but I wanted to get this video out there before the summer was over. So uh, basically what we have here is 500 feet of this, uh, I believe it's half inch quarter um, uh, irrigation tubing, very inexpensive. I got this on sale at Home Depot for $18, all 500 foot roll of it. Um, very, very inexpensive. And then uh, um, basically all I did here was I built a, a box uh, two by fours. This is four foot by eight foot. And I took a four by eight sheet of plywood and screwed it to the back. Um, what I did at that point was I stretched out all 500 feet of the irrigation hose across the yard and I just started winding it. Um, and the reason I have the duct tape on here was, was supposed to be a temporary solution. Uh, the duct tape was holding it in place as I coiled this around. So I started um, at the outside uh, and coiled my way around. I believe I started on this side. I coiled, 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 coiled. And, uh, and then once I got to the bottom, I actually fed all the other 250 feet through this hole here, this is all one continuous piece, and then coiled uh, the other side around. Both of them ended right in the middle here, and there's a hole behind this 2x4, which you can't see, where the uh, incoming comes in here and starts to coil around here, and then it goes through all these, and then it goes out the back, and I'll show you where that goes over into my diverter. Um, Basically, I just have this pointed at a southwest face of my of my pool here, the corner of the pool. Um, sun beats down on this all day long, whenever it's sunny, of course. And I turn the turn this on and divert some of my pool water through it. This works great to maintain your pool temperature um, and even boost it up a little bit more than a solar cover would as well. Um, one of these is not going to heat your pool up to 100 degrees. We live in Michigan here, so we have cold nights. Um, but the, the pool heater itself is a great maintenance for the pool. It keeps the temperature uh, nice and, and warm. Um, it also helps to make up for the colder nights uh, when you're losing a lot of your pool temperature. So, um, again, real basic design, and uh, this one's kind of falling apart. What I would recommend is uh, you can see how the once these things heat up, the, they uh, kind of slink down to the bottom here. And uh, what I would recommend that you do is either... Uh, put more wood bracing across here so that it keeps the, the whole coil flat to the to the uh, piece of plywood on the back or use yourself some cable ties and throw a cable tie in maybe every couple um, uh, hose uh, windings here all the way down you know on each corner so that it holds the the coil in place so that you don't have it kind of coming apart and all getting out of, out of order Using duct tape to get it, to hold it in place as I was winding it worked great, and uh, I had planned on taking that off and just kind of making it look real nice. Well, I ran out of time; that didn't happen. So uh, this is kind of what we're left with. It still works great. Doesn't look as great as it did when I started, but it still works very, very well. So um, I'll go ahead and show you the diverter and uh, kind of give you some statistics on how uh, uh, the temperatures and, and how it's working. Okay, so here's the diverter that I have set up, and I showed the same same basic description in the wood burning video, wood burning pool heater video. Um, but basically, I'll back up here and show you the whole setup. I have uh, my skimmer, and comes down into the pump, pumps the water through the filter, and I've got clean water coming out the side here into the diverter. Um, you'll kind of see the arrows here. Uh, the some of the most of the pool water goes straight through and and back into the pool. Um, I turn this knob back to force a little bit of a uh, little bit of the pool water down into the diverter here, and then some goes into the wood burning loop and some goes into the solar heater loop. Water heats up, comes back in this side over here, and both of these these loops here gets mixed back with the pool water and then back into the pool. 
real basic design. Um, this is all, I believe it's inch and a half PVC that we're using here. Um, you know, very inexpensive ball valves and, and real basic construction. So nothing too super complicated about it, um, but it works very well. No separate pumps, no sump pumps, no pool pump, you know, anything separate. I'm just using, diverting a little bit of the water from, from the pool pump here. Um, it doesn't really put any extra strain on the pool pump because, you know, it, it might uh, put a little extra, I guess, on it to force it through the, the coils, but once it gets full in it, really, the, the pool pump doesn't seem to even care. It, it doesn't run or sound any louder or anything like that. So, um, coming out the back of the solar heater over here, so you can kind of see underneath it, if I can get out of the sun. So that's where the, the pipe comes through, um, both sides of those coils. So, um, it goes in in here, goes around all the coils, goes around the coils on the other side, and then comes out on the other side over there. So, um, But I just threw some extra stain we had on this to try to seal it up because it's just particle board, as you can see, very cheap. And this is kind of the back or the side of the frame. So all just 45 degree angles <coughs> on, the, uh, on the frame for it. So nothing very elaborate with that. But if I had to redo it, I would, uh, once I got all the coils on here flat, I would have put a 2x4 tight flat down on it, just like I did with this one. But instead of doing it in the middle, I would have put one right here and one right here. And another improvement that I will make on this eventually down the road is to put a piece of plexiglass, clear plexiglass across it to just keep like a greenhouse effect in there. Um, seal all that heat in right around those pipes. So that'll boost the efficiency um, of this as well. So... That's the basic uh, design I have for the solar heater here. Um, I'll have a separate video that I'll do um, on the temperatures and um, using a dual probe thermometer, I'll just make some measurements and see what the water flows are and, and how much it actually heats up the pool and how long it takes to heat your pool and all that good stuff. Um, one word of caution, um, you do not want to leave this running overnight. Uh, if you pump your pool water through these coils when it's not sunny or when it's cool outside, they basically radiate all of your pool water heat out into the air and it'll actually cool your pool down. So you only want to run water through this in the sun. Um, another just bit of advice, and there's a lot of myths and misconceptions out there, it does not matter how fast you run the water through here. You, know, you don't have to like turn it off and let it sit and let it heat up and then pump it into the pool. Um, this is going to either heat more water at a lower temperature or it's going to heat less water at a higher temperature um, doesn't matter what your flow is fast or slow you're, you're only getting the same amount of sun energy into the water and into the pool whether you run more or less water through here it does not matter so um, just keep that in mind as well a lot of people out there designing some elaborate uh, timing mechanisms and things that are not really necessary so anyway hopefully this helps you get some ideas there's lots of different ways to do this um, if my roof wasn't so steep, I probably would throw it up on the roof or something, but uh, a little hard to work up there. It's a real steep roof. So um, hopefully this uh, gave you some good ideas. Um, highly recommend having a solar heater for the pool. It's, it's, uh, it's a free way to add some, some heat into the pool. It's not going to turn your pool into a jacuzzi or anything like that, but it does work pretty well. Um, and it definitely helps maintain that pool temperature. Um, up here in Michigan, we keep our pool at about 80 degrees. Uh, throughout the majority of the summer uh, between the solar heater and my wood burner here um, and I'm not in the sun more than eight hours a day so the pool's shaded most of the day so anyway hopefully this uh, helped you out gave you some ideas thanks for watching have a good one